It's make or break time in the championship fight as IMSA heads to VIR. Yes, it may be only the GTD classes present, but with just two rounds remaining after VIR, all eyes will be firmly on the championship battles. This is everything you need to know about IMSA's GT only round at VIR. VIR has been a staple on the IMSA calendar since 2002, where over the years the 18 turn 3.27 or 5.26 kilometer circuit that's located in Elton, Virginia has hosted either a Grand Am, ALMS, or IMSA race. Over the years, the race has seen various different formats, different classes present in different distances. However, in recent years, the race has settled in to be a GT only round on the IMSA calendar and a sprint race at that with two hours and 40 minutes in length. The track opened in 1957 with their very first SCCA race that ever took place at the track being won by none other than Carroll Shelby. The track struggled a bit in the early years but still managed to host Trans Am motorcycle races and in 1970 won their first IMSA race. Unfortunately, it would not last long as in 1974 the track was forced to close and the facilities would be converted into farmland, a state that it would sit in for the next 25 years. That was until 1998 when investors Connie Nyholm and Harvey Siegel decided to leave their careers in New York real estate and resurrect VIR. The result after their massive investment into the facility is truly amazing as after it reopened in 2000 it quickly attracted top racing back to the facility with SCCA, Trans Am, Moto America and IMSA all returning to the facility for races. Now it wasn't just the track that was transformed of course we saw safety improvements the track was widened from its original state but we also saw the grounds around the track also transformed. VIR is also the grounds for America's first motorsport resort, which features lodging, dining, skeet shooting, pistol and rifle ranges, as well as karting facilities. Now, I've only scratched the surface of the VIR's history and its revival, but if you want to find out some more information, then check the links in the show notes. There are some videos as well as podcast episodes that dive a little bit deeper into the history of VIR. You should go and check those out. Back to this weekend, though, and it's a GTD only weekend here. And honestly, we've seen some incredible racing from these GTD classes this year. Some great racing, and I think it'll carry through this weekend to VIR. VIR is a track that has some good passing opportunities on it. In particular, down the front stretch into turn 1, into turn 11, and down the long back straightaway into turn 14. However, it may also be worthwhile keeping an eye on the S's. If a driver gets a good run into there, they might take a stab up the inside, which always leads to an interesting couple of moments as they navigate those turns. And okay, I'll say it, we might see a car go off in the S's. But something you'll want to be mindful of this weekend is just the overall lack of full course yellows here. In the previous three IMSA races this season that have been two hours and 40 minutes in length, we've seen an average of three full course yellows per race. In the previous three races here at VIR, we've seen an average of 1.3. So that's less than half of the number of full course yellows we've seen on a conventional two hour and 40 minute race this year. Now, while the reduced grid size here at VIR and it being a GT only round certainly contributes to this, this is still going to significantly impact the type of racing that we see on track. And also, we should be able to see strategy play out a little bit more here with the expected longer green flag runs. Well, now that I've gone ahead and jinxed that, we're going to see like five full course yellows in this race. It's going to be fantastic. But now, hopefully that doesn't happen. Let's move on and talk about the weather. VIR is generally known to be one of the warmer rounds of the IMSA championship with temperatures usually ranging in sort of the mid 90s Fahrenheit that's about the mid 30 Celsius however this year it's going to be a little bit cooler with temperatures on Friday starting out at 83 and going up to a high of 87 on Sunday that's about 28 to 31 degrees Celsius. Now with the weather forecast being out of the way and it looking like a pretty good weekend, there are a couple of other storylines you should keep an eye on in IMSA's GT only round here at VIR. Now one of the things that I already spoke about is the expected lack of safety cars in this race. Fewer full course yellows means fewer opportunities to bunch the field up. So you want to be extra careful in this race to make sure that you're not picking up a silly pit road speeding penalty or having a lazy spin in the early going that loses all of your track position. Because here at VIR, those are going to be very difficult to recover from. 
it's also going to be crucial to have a strong qualifying run. Now, it's pretty much important to have a strong qualifying run at any of the IMSA sprint races, but here at VIR, with the lack of stoppages that we can expect to see in this race, you do not want to be stuck in the back of the pack in dealing with slower class traffic. In case you do have a poor qualifying run, well, I would expect to see some different strategies be employed. This would probably look like running the first stint long, waiting until everybody else comes in and makes their pit stops, try and get some clean air, take advantage of a lack of traffic that you get when you're in front of all of these cars, before making your pit stop later and hoping that you've leapfrogged some of the cars that you were previously stuck behind in traffic. Of course, this comes with some risks, like a full course yellow being thrown. However, I think it's a viable strategy that we could see employed here in the opening stint of the race. Another thing to watch for is that Roxy returns with yet another new co-driver. Yes, Roxy made her season debut at Road Atlanta with season-long driver Lauren Heinrich, but she was also piloted by Julian Andlauer. And Lauer was filling in for Seb Priya, who piloted the car for the opening races of the season after it was announced that Seb would be taking a step back from the team to focus on his Multimatic factory efforts. All of this occurred in the midst of a season where AO Racing is leading the GTD Pro Championship. Stepping in to fill the seat this weekend at VIR is former FAF full season driver and current MDK Endurance Cup driver Klaus Bockler. Now Klaus is also a Porsche factory driver, so you know he's pretty darn quick, but he also brings with him some experience from last year in this race, when he of course raced with Faf. Stepping into the heat of the GTD Pro Championship fight will be tough, so it's worthwhile keeping an eye on that number 77 Porsche this weekend to see how they make out. Now you can go and check out some more storylines to watch for this weekend at VIR in a recent episode that I did. But also just so you know, there's going to be a bonus thing that I'm watching for this weekend at VR exclusive to the S's newsletter subscribers. So make sure you're signed up for that. You can do so by clicking the link in the description or heading to offintheses.com. All right, it's everybody's favorite topic. It's BOP. And thankfully, there's not a lot for us to talk about this week. Here at VIR, we see a slight increase to the Acura's fuel capacity, just one liter, but importantly for them, they will receive an 11 and a half horsepower boost. That's a nice little bit of power increase for them, and it's sure to help them out along the long back straightaway here at VIR. Also notable is the Ferrari picking up 10 kilograms of weight, and some interesting changes for the Lamborghini as they get 15 kilograms heavier, they gain a couple liters of fuel capacity, but notably here they will have a one millimeter larger restraint restrictor diameter. That's going to translate to about an extra 5 horsepower for them, but considering the extra 15 kilograms of weight, I think this is largely going to cancel each other out over the course of a lap. There's also a couple of notable entry list notes to talk about. First off is Kyle Marcelli returns to the Wayne Taylor Racing Lamborghini. He returns after he missed the Road America round, recovering from thoracic outlet syndrome, and he was able to step into a car last weekend at Road America, where he competed in the Fanatec GT World Challenge America races there. And of course, as I previously mentioned, Klaus Bockler will be in Roxy this weekend, and this comes after Julian Andlauer previously piloted that car at Road America. It is currently unknown if Klaus is going to be in that entry for the remaining rounds of the season, or if we're going to continue to see this sort of musical chairs in Rexy slash Roxy. This year, we're going to see 23 entries take to the track at VIR, which is an increase of five from last year. They'll be spread across two classes with GTD Pro featuring nine entries, an increase of four, and the GTD class featuring 14 entries, which is an increase of one. 81 laps were turned by the victorious number three Corvette of Antonio Garcia and Jordan Taylor in GTD Pro last year. Now it should be noted that this was in the old modified GTLM spec Corvette C8R, and of course the Corvette being run this year is the new GT3 spec model. Meanwhile, in GTD, it was the number one Paul Miller Racing BMW of Madison Snow and Brian Sellers who took the win. In terms of my picks this weekend, I'm going with BMW in both classes. They've looked strong here with the M4 GT3 over the past couple of years, and I think that's going to carry through to this weekend. In GTD Pro, give me Paul Miller Racing. They've moved up from GTD, where they won this race last year, and I think Paul Miller Racing can go back to back here at VIR. In GTD, give me Turner Motorsports, who conveniently finished second here last year, and with Paul Miller Racing moving up to GTD Pro, I mean like, 
Turner Motorsports moves up to get that win, right? No, but in all honesty, they've been coming on really strong here recently, and if they even want to have a hope in catching Windward Racing for the GTD Championship, they have to have another very strong race here at VIR. I think they're going to do that. Keep an eye on Turner Motorsports. Speaking of those championship standings, let's take a look at them presented by P1 Web Development. If you're looking for a custom website, then look no further than P1 Web Development. You can check them out by heading to p1webdevelopment.com or clicking the first link in the description. In GTD Pro, it's number 77 AO Racing Porsche that leads with 2,256 points. That's a 76 point lead over the number 23 Heart of Racing Aston Martin. The number 14 Vassar Sullivan Lexus sits in third with the number three Corvette in fourth and rounding out the top five, the number one Paul Miller Racing BMW. In GTD, it's number 57 Windward Racing Mercedes that continues to lead the championship here. They're 268 points ahead of the Turner Motorsports BMW, with the 32 Korthoff Motorsports Mercedes in third, the 34 Conquest Racing Ferrari in fourth, and rounding out the top five, the number 12 Vassar Sullivan Lexus. There's also a full weekend of IMSA Support Series races at VIR to watch for. King things off on Saturday at 12.15 Eastern Time on IMSA TV and Peacock is the VP Racing Fuel Sports Car Challenge for race one of their weekend. That'll be followed at 2.10 Eastern Time for the Virginia is for Lovers Grand Prix in the Michelin Pilot Challenge. Once that two hour race has wrapped up, you can catch WeatherTech Championship qualifying at 4.45 p.m. Eastern Time on IMSA TV and Peacock. And rounding out the day at 6 o'clock Eastern Time will be race one for the Whelan Mazda MX-5 Cup, which will be available on IMSA TV. And flipping the calendar over to Sunday, it's an early start for the VP Racing Fuel Sports Car Challenge as at 8.35 a.m. Eastern Time, they'll get underway for race two of their weekend on IMSA TV and Peacock. Race two for the Whelan Mazda MX-5 Cup goes at 9.40 a.m. Eastern Time on IMSA TV. And rounding out the weekend at noon Eastern Time is the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship for the Michelin GT Challenge at VIR, and you can catch that race on USA Network, Peacock, IMSA TV, and IMSA's YouTube channel. Now, earlier on in the video, I talked about Roxy and how a new co-driver could have a big impact on their championship hopes. Well, that's not the only thing that you need to watch out for at VIR, but lucky for you, I have five storylines that you should watch at VIR right here. Huge shout out to all the channel supporters. If you too want to support the show, you can head to patreon.com slash off in the S's or click the join button below. Once again, though, thanks for tuning in. I hope everyone has a great race weekend. It doesn't go off in the S's.